Hey, we're back. It's the Scaling Secrets podcast. Hossein Kasmai is here, who is the number one expert in scaling because he's all about franchising and growing your operation. He is the chief executive officer of Franchise Creator, which is the country's leading franchise consulting firm with offices throughout the U.S. and also internationally. They have franchised over 500 brands and seen them grow to become national and sometimes international brands. And he's also the CEO of Combo Kitchen, which provides restaurants an opportunity to add menu items from one or more well-recognized restaurant brands in their current kitchen and operate them as a ghost operation for delivery and takeout only. So quite a, a fun range of businesses, and I'm sure we'll have some fun stories. So Hossein, glad to be speaking with you. It's a pleasure to be talking with you, Robert. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. And so we introduced you a little bit, but in your own words, what are you all about? What is your current focus and passion? Sure. So I think it's good for me to give you a little bit of a background uh, about who I am, really. But uh, look, you know, as an, I, it, it, I'm an entrepreneur, right? So I've started multiple businesses and um, my latest business is Franchise Creative. But what led to this is, you know, I think maybe I should take a little bit of a step back so you can understand how franchise creator was was uh, came to um, to life but you know i'm actually an engineer and uh, i did uh, for many years i worked for some big companies including motorola back in the day developing cell phones and pagers but i created a product that um, uh, it basically scrolled messages on the bottom of televisions this is going back many many years it was a it was really an innovative thing at the time today every channel has that but this allowed restaurants and hotels and you know sports pops to be able to superimpose images on the bottom of their television that are advertising and marketing whatever they're selling right so that product grew you know, that business grew incredibly fast and then it got bought out then i um invented another product that would basically fingerprint children in daycares and schools so that parents had something to provide the authorities in case a child went missing. I franchised that business. That's the first time I got into the world of franchising. So I expanded it through uh, another method as opposed to on your own. And that business grew to 175, 175 franchises in 11 countries. It got bought out. And then that's when I started Franchise Creator. Franchise Creator is a, um, we basically turn businesses into franchises and grow them um, as a franchise. I've started many, many other companies. And, you know, we'll talk about Combo Kitchen. We'll talk about some of the uh, other businesses that I've been involved in. But as an entrepreneur, I have my hands in so many different uh, cookie jars. Uh, but uh, the main business that has occupied me for the last uh, number of years has been franchise creator although franchise creator um, just about seven months ago it got acquired as well so this was my third exit um, that i've had uh, but now I'm, I'm still acting as the ceo of the company for some time and uh, continue to grow uh, my personal passion in in business which is really what turns me on well, very nice. And congratulations on all these successes. And so my two questions about you having all these businesses is why and how? Like, why not just focus on one? What's the reasoning for that? And then how do you time manage and delegate and deal with all the moving parts when you have all these different businesses to juggle? It's actually a great question. And I'm actually one that preaches to people the same thing, right? Do one very well, as opposed to being mediocre in 10, right? So... Uh, the um, my approach has always been is that, um, you know, you do a business and you take it off the ground. Right. So many business owners, we have two types of entrepreneurs. There are entrepreneurs that like to start with an idea and then put the pen to paper and build a company from ground up. That's incredibly complex. You really got to know what you're doing because you're building the a skyscraper but the bottom floors are incredibly important, right? Because if the first two, three, four, five floors are crooked, the whole thing is going to collapse as it grows. But then there are other entrepreneurs that come in and they like to get involved in a business that's already built, right? So they buy a small business and they grow it, right? Something that's already been proven. So I'm the first type, right? I like to build businesses from ground up. And I've done that multiple times, as I just mentioned. Um, 
so as you build these businesses and you get to a point where you have the right management system, where you have the right um, supervision, everything is kind of managing itself and it's running. It's a matter of just basically putting someone that can run that company, like, you know, continue running it and then you monitor it and then you move on to the next. But a lot of these businesses that we're talking about came as, as a result of owning one business. In other words, you own one business and then, there is that one client that comes to you and you're like, man, I like to partner with this guy. This guy has got something very, very good. And then that partnership creates another channel of income, of revenue, because now you have this partnership. You're not necessarily running the company. You basically are managing what the guy was doing wrong. You're basically coaching him <clears throat> and telling him this is the right part of your business and this is the wrong part of your business, right? So a lot of business owners... Robert, what happens is they work in, they're like the, the hamster, you know, turning the wheel every single day. They don't have the chance, the opportunity to step out and look at the wheel from the outside and see that, hey, you know, I could do something better so that the wheel goes faster. All they know is continue doing the same thing. So when an outside person that, you know, I, I happen to consult, I'm actually a consultant to close to 800 companies. And so I've seen it all. I've looked under the hood of restaurant businesses. I've looked under the hood of fitness companies, urgent care centers, home service businesses, <clears throat> you name it, automotive. So I have that visibility that, and, and that's because of the fact that I franchise so many companies, I've had the chance to see these companies grow from ground up. So that expertise is what I bring, helping a business owner that's already doing a great job and then take that company to the next level. So that's where these side companies have come. Most of these side companies have come from. But being an engineer, I'm also an idea guy. If I were to turn this camera, I'm sitting in my office and you can look at my wall. My wall is covered with patents, right? So I'm an idea guy. So then again, I go back to the type of entrepreneur that likes to put the pen to paper and start building something from scratch, come up with an idea. And, and get it launched, something innovative, something that solves the problem. That's that's basically how I've handled multiple companies. Very cool. And I'm excited to tap into your <laughs> engineering mindset and the abstractedness, because as you said, it's so easy to get stuck in the hamster wheel and you, you're so behind on time, you, you, don't, you can't even think about delegating or expanding or having an operator run things. And so that's something that we need to be doing and get coaching on. And I like your insight there on how you said there's sort of two types of people, right? There's the people that like to build and then the people that like to take something that's built and then grow it, correct it, expand it, continue it. And I'm always amazed, my mind's blown at this franchise idea because usually when you hear franchise, you think of like food, right? You think like a fast food or, or Asian restaurant or something. But then I noticed that in your list of franchises, there's like, urgent care centers, physical therapists, you mentioned the home services business. And that's always, that's like easily forgotten about, right? Because usually you think franchise, you think McDonald's, Burger King, something like that. And so you mentioned about this idea of you coaching someone that maybe is doing a lot of things wrong in their business. And so since you see, you've seen it all, is there like a common mistake? Is there a low hanging fruit when it comes to these businesses or these franchises? Do you see just the same mistake being made over and over? You know, the answer is yes. And what's crazy about this is that um, the people always start with an idea, right? So you mentioned restaurant business. Restaurant business seems from the surface. If I'm at home thinking what business I'm going to start, that's the easiest from the outside looking in. That's the easiest business, right? Everybody knows how to cook food. I just serve the food. I get paid. Done, right? It can't be that difficult. However, it turns out to be the most difficult business you can ever get into, right? It's an incredibly difficult business because you're dealing with employees that may have a few drinks tonight and decide not to show up tomorrow. And now you find yourself behind the grill cooking hamburgers. And, you know, there's a lot of intricacies as far as, you know, the profit margin of restaurants because it's highly competitive. And uh, the, the, the common mistake people make is they get into a business that they know very little about, right? And, and they, 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 they continue riding the wave. They continue doing the same thing. They enter the hamster wheel and they're trying very hard to keep the hamster wheel going. 
costs are going up every single year. Year after year, payroll has never gone down. It's only gone up. Rent has never gone down. It's only gone up. When you look at food costs, it never goes down. It only gone, it goes up. When you look at the cost of operating any kind of business, whatever business you're talking about, it only goes up, right? Uh, you want to put blinds in your windows. There's a lot of blind businesses. Well, the material goes up year after year. So the question is, are you capable of keeping your margin, right? So you're selling for this amount. Your cost is here. The difference is your profit. Are you able to, as this goes up, keep this up, and this goes up, keep this up, and hopefully higher and higher? Look, I tell people all the time, if you have a single location business, retail business, and you're not planning to grow it, this is a scaling podcast, so let's talk about scaling. If you're not planning to scale your business, you got a job. That's what you have. It's merely a job. A job that doesn't have a raise, a job that doesn't have benefits, vacations, or anything. You got yourself a, a pretty bad job, to be frank with you, right? You got to scale every business. So people, the common mistake that everyone makes, Robert, so you ask about a common mistake. The common mistake everybody makes is very simple. They look at sales and not look at profits, right? But the sales don't pay the bills. Profits do, right? So you look at your sales going up every year. You look at more customers coming into your doors, whatever you're, you're, you're providing and selling. And you're selling, hey, last year I did a million in sales. This year I'm doing 1.1, 10% higher. You know, the next year you're looking at 1.2, but then you go home and you count your money and you realize you're still short. You're short, short, more short this year than you were last year. Why? Because the cost of your kid's school went up because inflation has gone up. You, you, because the cost of purchasing an iPhone for them went up. The cost of everything has gone up, but your business, you, you think you've gone up that 10%, but you don't realize that your cost came up by 20%. So you're down actually by 10%, right? Your profits are down by 10%. You made 10% less this year than you, than you did the, the year before. Inflation took you for another five or six or 7%. You're down by 15%, not realizing it. So what do, what do typical business owners do? Continue doing the same thing. They don't stop for a minute, step out of the hamster wheel and say, what is it that I can do so that I can make more money? What other services that I can provide within the four walls of this of this business, of this store, that can potentially bring more money? What partnerships can I make? How do I scale this? Where do I go from here? Those are the mistakes that typically a lot of business owners make. That's a great insight that a lot of these business owners are just looking at the money coming in, but not the profit. And they might be dying a slow death because as you said, like it, it went up 10% and they think they're doing great, but then the cost of everything else went up 20%. So now they are behind. And so I'm curious about this kind of, I'm not sure like what you label, it. like that's like a, like a failing forward mindset or like always looking for growth or something. And I'm curious, like, do you think of this as, is it like neuroticism? Is it, like being optimistically pessimistic? Is it uh, like kind of looking at your numbers every day? Like what sort of headspace should we get into in order to have this kind of like, well, not a false sense of urgency, just urgency, but do it without being overly stressed. How is that possible? You know, it comes down to one thing, understanding p &L, right? The simplest thing in the world when you're running a business is understand your numbers, right? The Shark Tank guys tell you all the time, the Shark Tank guys tell you a lot of things that may not be real or true because they're experts in some things and not experts in everything, right? And then they get all of these different businesses that come to them. So yeah, they are, they're saying some things that may not be accurate or correct, but there's, there, there is one thing that, for example, Kevin O'Reilly says it all the time and he says, know your numbers. You've got to know your numbers. So the right thing to do is to look at your PL. First of all, understand PLs and be able to look at your profit and loss statement. PL is something, you know, what, what most retail business owners do is they look at their POS terminal. They run a report, look at it, oh, sales are up. And then they give their books to some person outside, some third party accountant or bookkeeper that's doing the books. And then they put the, the, the PL and they file the taxes. They probably never even look at it, right? So numbers are incredibly critical because if you really truly sit down and spend a good hour reviewing line by line everything on your profit and loss statement, you're going to see something very cool. And that is 
I'm looking at this year, I'm looking at last year, and I'm looking at the year before. I have three years in front of me. Why is it that my sales went up by 10%, but my credit card fees went up by 20%? Question to be asked. Why is it that you know my rent is up this much this year, but then it, you know, it was up so much higher the next year? On and on and on and on, right? So you have to understand what part, to be able to be successful, what part of uh, what percentage of your sales should be allocated to each expense line, right? You got to know if you're in a restaurant business that your food cost should be less than 30%. If you have a 40% food cost, you've already got something wrong. So if you look at your P&L, look at your cost of goods, which is the food cost from year one to year two to year three, and you're seeing this, that's a problem. You're, you, you have a higher... Uh, uh, experience in this field, you've been buying from Cisco or US Foods or whoever for the longest, longest time, your food costs should be actually doing this. You should be getting all kinds of rebates and discounts. So just looking at profit and loss statement provides so much information to a potential business owner that they can navigate the business in a different direction and they're going to see profits go up incredibly fast. That's very helpful to get used to looking at a PL statement, look at it on a recurring basis, and then figure out what story it's telling you, especially how these line items are doing from a, a three year period, right? Two years ago, a year ago, this year. And so that way, you know, are they on the way up or on the way down? And I imagine there's also some amount of research, right? Like you're mentioning about, like, say, the restaurant business and like knowing what these numbers should be, right? Like knowing what percentage of, of your food cost should be and things like that. Absolutely. It's knowing your numbers, right? It's absolutely comes down to knowing your numbers. I would tell you this, um, that if you literally sat down and asked 100 business owners, when was the last time you looked at your P&L? I'm willing to bet 97% of them haven't looked at it for probably months or, 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 or even over a year. They haven't, oh, last time I did my taxes, my accountant went over it with me. Well, that was a year ago. You know, so for me, I always tell people as I consult with, you know, business owners, I always tell people, look at your P&L weekly. And every month you have a deeper look. You, you take an overall look on a weekly basis. Then on a, every month you sit down, allocate 30 minutes minimum and go over line by line and make comparison to the month before. And, 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 and that, that's how it's, it's easy to make a correction when you're off uh, your track by only a little bit. But once you're off this far, it's that much higher to bring it back to, to where it needs to be, right? So the sooner you react, the sooner you can correct the problem before it gets a lot bigger. And, and this is how businesses go under, right? They, 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 look at, they, they don't look at these numbers and they continue doing the same thing and they, they have these losses and they're, I, can, I can handle this, I can handle this a little bit more and the losses get bigger. They don't know what's causing the loss. All they know is I'm working harder trying to correct this, but they don't know what they're correcting. So that, that is that definitely a key thing about this. And I, I love that this is a specific strategy because you hear this advice, like know your numbers, but what you're describing here is extremely doable and, and very to kind of use your, your branding. It's repeatable, right? Any business can do this and should do this. And you're saying this is the difference between those that go under and those that kind of have this intuitive awareness of what's going on. And even just as we're recording this a few days ago, like one of the biggest automotive companies, they sent out one email and fired like 14,000 employees, 10% of their workforce. And you, you look at that as a bystander and you think like they did that in a hurry. They didn't plan ahead. This must have been a surprise for them. How disorganized are there versus if there had just been some equivalent to this every week, go over that PL again, and then every month do a more deeper dive. And so you, you already solved a huge problem in business that many people pay lip service to, but you gave us something concrete. So now I'm gonna see if we can get another huge problem solved. You mentioned a few times here about people. And I think there's some saying that like, business would be 
really easy if it wasn't for the people, right? And you mentioned like maybe customers or employees. There's there's always just issues and drama happening. So do you have any people secrets, especially when it comes to running and scaling a business? Well, look, you know, that's the million dollar question or a billion dollar question, right? It's all about people. Business is all about people. You can have the greatest idea in the world, but if you don't have the support system within your company, you will guarantee get you're guaranteed to fail. It's impossible, right? I always say I'm as good as the people that have helped me be where I'm at, right? I'm as good as them. I, you know, it's their help. It's their expertise. So I, Hiring, you know, um, the people really starts with um, the top layer, right? So when you when you when you're scaling your business, you got to know it's like you're the president and you're about to go to war. Well, you don't hire soldiers. What you hire is generals, right? Let the generals hire the colonels and let the colonels hire the soldiers and so forth and so on, right? So if you have the right generals in place then those generals know exactly what, because you don't know necessarily, potentially, what kind of soldiers you need to win this war. What you do know is how to hire upper echelon management, people like yourself that understand what they need to hire, right? So if you have the right managers in place right below you, those managers' job is now to go off and hire the employees that are actually going to do the work. And you know, look, employees can make or break a business, right? So if you look, Elon Musk, when he bought uh, Twitter uh, today, X, one of the first things he did, he's got, he got rid of a majority of engineers of, of, of Twitter. Now that's a risky and very gutsy move on his side, right? Because at the end of the day, without engineers, you've got nothing. It's a technical company. It's a technology company. That's all it is. And you just got rid of your technology people. But he did that and yet he succeeded because there's a lot of fat and he cut the fat. He trimmed the fat in order to make the company as profitable as possible. So you need to understand if you have the right generals in place, those guys will be monitoring their soldiers. And those soldiers, you, you, you've you got to... One of the things that people... Um, are very hesitant about, you know, as they're, as they're scaling their business, they're hiring more employees. And then there is a lot of leeway as to what those employees are doing and how much of their time is being spent really working, right? This whole, whole notion of working from home is liked by some, hated by some. It is what it is. You know, I have my opinion. Somebody else has another opinion, but it has changed the game a little bit, right? So, you now have employees that are not being managed eight, eight hours a day. They're being managed through a couple of Zoom calls and you're allowing these employees to self, self-manage self themselves. That's fine. But the hiring now becomes a lot more difficult because you need responsible people, right? What is self-management? How do you, one of the ways I measure, and, and this may be liked by a lot of people of your listeners and maybe hated by a lot of your listeners, a credit score, simple credit score speaks volume about someone's personality. Everybody has gone through rough times and I get it. You know, you made one mistake, you paid a couple of bills late and your credit score took a ding. But if you've consistently had a low credit score in your life, that tells me about your personality, right? Because it's a responsibility to keep your credit score high. So if you want to work from home, you got to be able to be responsible and manage yourself. If you're not managing your, your own personal credit, if you're not managing your own loans, your house, everything is upside down, your finances are upside down, how are you going to manage your eight hours that you're going to be working by yourself? So if you ask those right questions, it all starts with hiring. People say in real estate, you make money in, you make money in buying, not in selling. And that's true in, 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 in with respect to employees as well. You make money when you, 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 you're, you're creating the path at hiring. If you hire the right person, that that person is going to make or break your business, right? So the key is to pay closer attention to that. Very nice. And so this is all just new ways of thinking, right? And maybe we have uh, gotten off the off the beaten path in our business with the decisions we make and the questions we ask ourselves and the things we do just because it's 
the the momentum is easy enough where you excelled at your job and now you're an entrepreneur and business owner and but then it requires completely new ways of thinking and so i love your analogy here of hire the generals right like it would it would be great or you, you might be tempted for you yourself to do all this but what you need is more of you and then that way that you can focus on the the strategy and so it seems like we need to kind of reallocate our time, right? You think of like that you mentioned about self-management, time management, you think about that pie chart and there seems to be some amount of looking at the numbers more carefully, uh, dealing with the, the people more, dealing with the growing and the strategy. So as far as everything that you've learned and done with franchising and in scaling, is there a hidden question in our conversation here? Is there a question that you wish I would ask you, Hossein? Well, um, the question, there's a few questions that come to mind, but one I would say is, you know, to a lot of, a lot of business owners that come to me, you know, I've, I've had the, the honor, the pleasure to have consulted with so many of them. A lot of business owners come to me and, and, you know, I look at their numbers, I look at their business and, you know, it, it, the business is not in the right place. The business is in the wrong place, it's on the wrong track. And they consider that a failure and where in, in, and, and they're not making money, right? They've been doing this for two or three years and they're not making money. They're looking at their numbers go lower this year versus last year. And they consider that to failure. And, 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 the, and, and the question I guess that I would ask is, is it okay to fail in a business? And the answer to that question is you've never succeeded. You've never ever reached success if you haven't failed more than you've succeeded. Okay. Because it's okay to fail. Think about you, you, you fail at one business, right? And I say this because at some point, every business owner needs to take the business owner need to take a look at their business and say, do I continue this and fix it, or do I jump ship? And it's different for every business, right? And again, I can look at a business and say, look, there's there's a chance of investing this much money and saving this business, or it's better to you know, start this other idea or product or business that you have. But the bottom line is that many business owners, they try one thing one time and they fail at it. Look, the road to the top is incredibly bumpy, right? This is the success is way on top of the hill. And this road is very bumpy. You're going to fall. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to be bruised. You're going to be bloody. And you're going to stay 90 Nine percent of people are gonna say the hell with this. I'm going down. I, I'm 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 dying here. I'm all bleeding all over the place. I'm out. And then there's that one percent that bloody and bruised up. They're crawling to the top and they finally make it there. But the view from the top is second to none, right? So it's how resilient you are to make it up there. And if and it's okay if you failed one time, two times, three times. I myself have had multiple businesses that I start that I realized later on that this business is incredibly difficult to operate or very, very tough to become profitable. And you realize that as a failure, but it's never a failure because you learn so much from that and you apply that to your next business. You got to, you got to have, all it takes is one home run, one business that has the potential or does make seven digit, eight digit, whatever your digits are, and you have an, a wonderful exit. It takes that one exit that puts you where you need to be. It, who, no one cares that you lost 50 grand in this business, 100 grand in that business, 200 grand in this business. Only thing you should care about is I made $10 million in this one or $30 million in that one. That's, that's really the thing. It's, it's okay to fail more than you succeed. That is motivating and inspiring. You only have to win once. It's okay to fail more than you succeed. And so what are some next steps here, Hossein? If people are impressed and amazed at the advice you gave and the stories you gave and they want to say, well, what's, how do I contact him or find out about his business opportunities? Where should someone go? Sure. Look, you know, if you need to reach out for, you know, just asking questions, if you want me to help you with your business or if you want to scale your business, if you want to turn your business into a franchise uh, and grow it, or you want to 
buy into a business and say, look, you know, I want to buy into a franchise and grow it or whatever the case is, you know, reach out to me. I, uh, I can be reached at, um, you know, in, in, with, uh, with, in my email, my email is hk at franchisecreator.com. Um, I'm happy to help out in every form, any fashion that I can and guide you guys. Look, you know, I'm at a stage in my life that I like to help people. I want to help entrepreneurs. Look, I started from the very, very bottom. You know, I, I, when I came to this country, I didn't have a hundred dollars to my name. And this for me means a lot because I want to help the next generation and whoever has the energy and the, the passion, because it takes more than energy, it takes the passion to get to the top of the hill. So if you need a helping hand, that's what I'm here for. Very nice. And thank you for providing that helping hand and for providing what you did for us today. That email address is hk at franchisecreator.com, combokitchen.com. And then if you want to find him on LinkedIn, that's H-O-S-S-E-I-N, last name K-A-S-M-A-I. So even if you're listening to the podcast in the car, pull the car over and write down hk at franchisecreator.com. Mr. Hossein, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. And I, I feel like I need to write down like four or five very helpful life lessons. So thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. And one last thing, you can also follow me on Instagram, Hossein Kasmai. It's at Hossein Kasmai. And you got, I do a lot of these type of videos and maybe helpful to others. Robert, thank you so much for this and uh, looking forward to our next conversation.